fall comes to Pickwick Lake, and it's brimming with bass. Oh, yeah! A hard-fought season comes down to one final event, one final chance for victory. Woo! Pros from every corner of the nation battle for a championship title. We have a champion. And even bigger things to come. Today, the 2009 season comes to a close. Yeah! This is the Strin Series Championship. have turned along the Tennessee River, and it's prime time for one last hunt for big bass. After an amazing week of competition, 10 anglers are left in the final event of the season. From Florence, Alabama, this is the 2009 Strin Series Championship. Hi everybody, I'm Jason Harper, and welcome to this beautiful stretch of the Tennessee River. For the anglers that qualified to get here, the Strin Championship represents one last chance to finish off the 2009 season on a positive note. And for a lucky few, it really is the launching pad for even bigger ambitions next season. Working alongside me is Charlie Evans, and Charlie, one angler who looks like he is ready to launch this morning is Yamaha Pro Mark Rose, who sacked nearly 38 pounds in the first two days of this event. Jason, Mark Rose may be from Arkansas, but he's been fishing this area since he was a teenager and knows these waters as well as anyone. He won a Walmart FLW Series event right here in 2007. This week, he's got a sweet spot that's loaded with big bass but he's got to travel about 80 miles downriver to get to it, and if it holds up one more day, he'll be the 2009 Strin Series champion. And there's even more at stake here. The highest finisher from each of the five Strin Series divisions will earn a slot at next year's Forestwood Cup in Atlanta, Georgia. Mark Rose leads the tournament. Right behind him from the Southeast Division is National Guard Pro Jonathan Newton, who's from just down the road in Rogersville. You know, it's pretty exciting to have lived here and fished here all of your life. And to be fortunate enough to make the top 10 is, is good, but to be in striking distance to win is even better. Um, I'm not nervous at all. I'm, I'm really kind of excited. I think, you know, if anything's meant to be, it'll be, and, and I'm going to go do what, I, what I've been doing. I'm actually I'm going to get more time to fish today because we're going to get out the lot quick. And um, so it's going to be, it's pretty exciting, really. I'm excited about it. I got an early bite going on by 10.30. I'm about done every day, so I know I can catch 25 up there if they bite because I've seen this, that quality fish. It's a lot of five, five and a half pounders living where I'm fishing, but I hadn't been able to get many of them in the tournament. The uh, water's clearing up, and that's hurting my bite. I'm throwing a big spinnerbait, and the uh, clear water, is, uh, they're not biting it, and it's uh, you know, as good as it was in the stain water. You know, I just love the Tennessee River, uh, especially Pickwick. It has a special place in my heart. Uh, it's just beautiful here. I was able to win here a couple years ago, the FLW Eastern Series event. It was happened to be in the fall. This is a little bit different time of year. Everything's shallower. Everything's up in the water column, and, and the fish are just shallower. I'm having to use shallower baits, making long runs. A lot of things are different. I like fishing the mussel beds and the ledges on Tennessee River. Those fish just aren't out there right now. Cool water rising water. It's making a lot of things different and I'm just really blessed that I was able to figure something else out. The key here is going to be deciding where do you fish. The location is critical. Whether to stay real close to takeoff point and get a long fishing day in or make one of two other choices, lock up river into Wilson and this is the tallest lock in the TVA system or to make a long run down to the other end of Pickwick Lake in the Big Walk. The Tennessee River runs along the northern edge of Alabama. Anglers can fish along more than 100 river miles stretching across two states. They take off from McFarland Park on Pickwick Lake in the city of Florence. Here's Keith Pace who starts the morning in third place. Keith decided to lock up river this morning to Wilson Lake. He's got a spot right up against a rock bluff where there's current. He's slow rolling a spinnerbait real deep. What I'm trying to do is get real close to these walls a bunch of minnows and shad has been on this whole bank all week. And that's the reason I've been catching these fish on this big old spinner bait, rolling it real slow down deep. Cloudy and rainy days, they bit a lot better, but sun comes out, it kind of gets tough. There he is. 
bumped it off them rocks and he come up and got it. Oh, yeah. That'll help a lot. Three pounder. A good start for Keith Pace. Now over to Kellogg's Pro Dave Lefebvre, who's coming off a great year on the Walmart FLW Tour. He finished both the season and the Forestwood Cup in the top 10. Dave's done everything but win one. This time, though, he's got a new plan. You know, with these post-frontal conditions, a lot of times you either got to slow down because the fish are a little more inactive or, or speed up, like which is what I'm doing. This is actually a big, giant, I don't know if you can tell how big that thing is, but it's a one ounce giant jig. Instead of fishing it real, real slow, I'm trying to get a reaction bite. Actually working this bait like really, really hard, um, letting it sink to the bottom in about 20 feet, letting this fall, snapping it. And it's a real heavy jig, so it falls real fast, trying to get that reaction bite. That's a big one. You know, that, that bait flying up, if they don't get a chance to look at it, it just flies up, sinks back down. You know, they have to bite it. They're more instinctively, not that they're feeding, but they're just wanting to check it out and they don't have hands like we do, so they gotta use their mouth. This is the deal. I got ran about 40 miles. I'm out of cell phone service. And unfortunately, I've got some equipment problems. I've got no GPS and no depth finder in the front. And we can't call for backup. We can't call for help unless I run about 20 miles that way. And uh, so what I did, I've turned that, that GPS around. At least I've got something, but it's, uh, it's real confusing because I'm going this way and that thing's pointing the wrong way. So uh, that's what I excel at, I guess, adversity. Well, by golly, I got me one. I've got like a half hour window to catch. That's a good fish. I mean, if that's my smallest one, that'll be good. <clears throat> but uh, I missed my half hour window, so <laughs> it took me a while to get one, but I got him finally. Awesome. So the giant jig and a little bit of improvising for Dave Lefebvre puts him on the board. Awesome. That first fish meant a lot. While Mark Rose is still making the long run to his first spot, He's led this tournament from day one, and if his honey hole holds up, he's gonna be tough to catch. Nice one. But that won't stop anyone else from trying. More from the Tennessee River next. FLW Outdoors from Florence, Alabama is brought to you by Walmart, save money, live better. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. National Guard. Berkeley, catch more fish. Castrol, maximum sludge protection for maximum performance. And by Evinrude E-Tech. With three years, no maintenance. Spend more time on the water. Welcome back to the final day of competition in the 2009 Strin Series Championship. It's the last event of the year, the last chance for these anglers to bring home a trophy and cash a six-figure winner's check. Good fishing and great weather yes, greeted the field on day one. Whoa, folks, look at that. Some anglers ran far and some stayed close to home, but nearly everyone brought in a limit. National Guard Pro Jonathan Newton locked up to Wilson Lake and it paid off. There's one. But Mark Rose, who has dominated on Pickwick in the past, brought in 22 pounds, five ounces for a lead of over three pounds. A fog delay on day two shortened the day and affected the morning bite. Some pros stayed close and weighed in solid limits, but the leaders made long runs and returned with really big bass. There's one. Jonathan Newton and Keith Pace had a productive day on Wilson, but they couldn't catch day one leader Mark Rose, who went the other way. 15 pounds and six ounces, 37 11. He is still your National Guard leader. Great job. You do it again tomorrow. Well, I felt kind of like the bandit out there today. I had a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm, I'm around some fish, you know. It's just going to take getting a couple more big bites and uh, 
I'll be ready for them if they're ready to buy it. Ooh. Rose's 80-mile run to Bay Springs has worked out so far, but a hungry local and a pack of top-notch anglers will do their best to make sure it doesn't pay off again. Back to today's competition, here's Jonathan Newton, who started the day just two pounds behind Mark Rose. While Mark headed downriver, Jonathan walked upriver to Wilson Lake. You know, I know these lakes pretty good. I've, I've been here all my life, and any time that I lock, it kind of restricts what I do. It's kind of my way of taking the local advantage and, and condensing it to where it's not as much of a headache. Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, your mind can just go crazy at home. I mean, you think about stuff you've done in the past, and it's tough. Well, that strategy's worked pretty good so far this morning. He's already got four keepers in the boat. Now then we're going. He's throwing a three-quarter ounce jig and using his electronics to target large groups of bait fish. This year's been a good shad year in general. You can go just about anywhere on these chain of lakes and there's just millions of shad. It was a real good spawn year, I guess, for them, but it's really helping our fish get, get big and fat. There's one. Now, boys, that's risky. That's risky. You don't really need to make a habit of doing that, but 20-pound uh, big game and a big stiff hook, you can do it. Jonathan swinging that one over the side of the boat rather than using Ooh. his dip net. That's a risky move. Well, the gamble paid off, giving Jonathan a good-looking limit. He'll need every ounce of it if he plans on catching our leader, Mark Rose. Mark made about an hour and a half run, ran all the way down Pickwick Lake, took a left through the Tom Bigby waterway, all the way to Bay Springs in Mississippi. And with a five bass limit already in the boat, it looks like he's made the right decision. I thought, man, maybe I could go down there and get away from the crowd, you know. It, it was a risk. But I figured a deal out down there. Nice one. These fish are feeding up in the water column. Their bait's up, and normally people fishing these kind of deals, they're fishing on the bottom, and these fish just wanted to come up. So I threw a jerk bait a lot, um, topwater bait, things like that. Whoo! They're not big, but we got us a limit. With five in the live well, now it's time to start looking for a kicker. I'm just in a zone. I'm so focused right now. This feels like a better one. Feeling good, I like it. Three and a half pound spot. That's what you come to Bay Springs for right there, folks. Wow, an excellent upgrade from Mark Rose. Once again, proving why he's so tough to beat in these Tennessee River tournaments. The gamble on his long run is paying off and he holds the lead after three days of competition. I may not catch another bass, but I feel real good. But for anglers closer to home, there are still plenty of good bass and lots of time left to fish. The toad. <laughs> That's awesome. And no one's ready to give in just yet. That worked, thank you, Lord. More of the 2009 Strin Series Championship from Florence, Alabama when we continue. Welcome back to the 2009 Strin Series Championship here in Florence, Alabama. A lot of water moves through this stretch of the Tennessee River, part of what makes it such a great bass fishery. National Guard Pro Jonathan Newton knows these waters well, and he gave us the breakdown on how to adjust to changing conditions. This year, we've had a lot of different weather. We've had a lot of rain. The water's actually higher than it usually is, so the current's a big factor here, but the problem right now is it's been moving constantly for three or four weeks now to get all the water out of the chain. The fish, you know, they're full. I mean, they can feed at any time, get the bait as they come around the point. It makes it kind of tough because the fish are full. There's a lot of different baits that are working. This time of the year, I like just a black and blue jig. I think a lot of people are probably catching them on it. 
A lot of the guys in the current use the spinner bait. It's pretty in it. You usually want a little heavier spinner bait. This is a three quarter ounce spinner bait. Another bait is a small crankbait. I mean, the shad are really small, so a small crankbait works real good. One of the things that I really, really like to use is a Berkeley hollow belly. This is for the kicker fish. The big fish cannot stand that bait, and they will absolutely eat it up. The person that wins this tournament will have a group of fish found somewhere out offshore, or the person that has the right pattern. Definitely the right pattern now could be a winning factor in this tournament. You know, it's not just, it's not as easy as just flipping down a bank, especially with this much water running. There's one. I had to get rid of that other one again. That was a surprise, as it has been every time. Not too bad. Now my small one's not one five. A nice upgrade for Jonathan Newton. Now let's get over to Alabama pro Scott Canterbury. He started the day over seven pounds behind Mark Rose. While Mark was making that long run, Scott was fishing just a couple miles from takeoff and putting some good keepers in the boat. Every cast you make is so important. I mean, it's just my goal every day is to make the last hour as good as the first hour. Fish is good the last hour as I did the first hour. A lot of times you, you lose concentration. I just, I concentrate a lot. I might not be talking much, but I concentrate a lot. Get in here, get in here. That's a better fish. It's a chunk. I concentrate. It's a fat football right there now. It's a good day for footballs. The concentration pays off for Scott Canterbury, has a nice upgrade there. Now over to Land Lakes Pro Ott Defoe. This is his third top 10 in the Strin Series Championship over the last four years. Ott's also fishing on Pickwick Lake and has a limit of two pounders in the boat. He's been using both a jig and a crankbait, but whatever bait he uses, he pays attention to even the smallest Whoa. details. The front hook on this bait has got kind of Bent up. When you're fishing for this kind of money, one bad hook can mean you lose one fish. Or it could be the one fish that you need that day. It may look all the difference. Anytime the bait I'm getting ready to use, if it's a crankbait, top water, anything that's got treble hooks, I always just check the points. I just kind of do it with the skin on my finger. Anytime you get hung, or even if you just make a bad cast and hit the bank, the hook could hit the bait and roll the point over. Anytime the points roll over and it's not straight and good and sharp, that could result in a missed fish. The details in this kind of sport can mean thousands and thousands of dollars. This morning, man, it started off right off the bat. It took me all of 11 minutes to catch a limit this morning. Seemed like just every little bitty eddy had a fish on it. They were pretty much all keepers. All those fish were on a small crankbait. It's just a small balsa wood plug. Runs about three foot deep. And I was throwing on a spinning rod, and I'm fishing it pretty fast because I'm going with the current, but fishing it pretty fast with those eddies and kind of twitching it along. If it hits something, I'll give it a little extra twitch. Oh, right there's one. That's a good one. That is a good one. Damn, baby. That work, thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Guess we won't change just yet, anyways. We'll stay here a little bit longer. Yeah, that of work. That's a good upgrade for Aunt Defoe. So it looks like the angler staying close to takeoff. Defoe, Canterbury, and Jonathan Newton are finding good sized fish to fill their live wells. 20 pound big game and a big stiff hook, you can do it. But the pro catching the biggest bass is the one who made the longest run. Yeah! 
Woo! Mark Rose's Mississippi Honey Hole is still hot. Woo! Feeling good. Back in Florence, Alabama, we're in the home stretch at the Strin Series Championship. With just a few hours left to fish, here's a look at our leaderboard. Ott Defoe and Scott Canterbury have both moved up a couple of spots, but Mark Rose took the risk and made that long run, and he's still on top. You figure a little something out. And, you know, winning one of these tournaments is all about figuring a little key deal out that everybody else is. And there's so many good fishermen in this thing, and just figuring a little key something else out. And if you notice, I don't have anybody on my water down here. Mark's the only one of our top 10 anglers fishing in Bay Springs. He's been able to add two more upgrades. He's fishing main lake points, targeting isolated wood cover, and using that jerk jerk pause technique. A comfortable looking Mark Rose even has time to share some of his fishing wisdom with us. A little tip for you guys at home. Always, always retie, even if you don't, you know, feel like you need to. You never can tell when you're using fluorocarbon, you might have a little burn in it or something. Always retie, it doesn't take but just a second. And more than anything, it helps your confidence in knowing you got a good fresh knot on there every so often. You're not really worried in the back of your mind if you're gonna, if you're gonna break off. Go ahead and get it over with. It doesn't take but just a second. That's good advice. It looks like everything's working for Mark today with a good limit in the boat, and he's still looking for another big upgrade. Watch out. Oh, come on, baby, get in this net. I need you bad. Hannah Grace and Natalie. That one's for y'all. One for his girls and another one for Mark Rose, building a nice cushion now over his competitors. Meanwhile, back to Dave LaFibra. This is his ninth straight Strin Series championship, and he's made the top 10 four times now. You know he'd love to make this one a win. He started fishing that giant jig, but it hasn't helped him catch any giant bass. I went in shallow just to fill my limit and just decided to go shallow and do what I do, you know, skip and pitch a jig around some shallow wood. That's a big one. Oh yeah, that's a giant. It's not strapped in there for that sucker. Well, doggone it, look at that thing. <laughs> That'll work. Geez, I've been fishing out deep, catching big ones, and come in shallow just to fill my limit, and I catch a toad. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Oh. Look at that one. That's awesome. Cool. How about that? He comes in shallow just to fill out his limit, ends up with nearly a four-pound kicker. That's what I'm talking about right there. Back over to Keith Pace, who started in third and began the day pretty well, but he's still looking for his kicker. I pulled up to my first spot on a bluff wall, and it was kind of shady there, and I, I caught a three pounder right off. Oh, yeah. That'll help a lot. Three pounder. Went up about 20 minutes, caught another three pounder. Fish. Oh, so I had a good start in the first 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. I went to the other side where it was real shady on the south side of the lake. It took me about three or four hours. I finally got a limit. Uh, it's a good place right here to catch a big one. Yeah. Uh, good one. Good one. It's going to cover for me. Might be the biggest fish I had all day. Oh, yeah.
about a two and three quarter. Beautiful smallmouth. Keith will be able to upgrade with that one. So with a couple of hours left to fish, here's where the competition stands. Tournament leader Mark Rose took off first thing, going long to his Mississippi hotspot. But most of the field stayed close to home and got in plenty of early morning fishing. The river current helped National Guard Pro Jonathan Newton fill his live well, while at Bay Springs, the bite remained strong, helping Rose maintain his lead. Yeah! Woo! But there's still a long way to go before this thing is over, so stay with us. A six-figure top prize and five berths to the 2010 Forestwood Cup are up for grabs on the Tennessee River as the competition goes down to the wire. Mark Rose only has a few minutes left to fish before he has to make that one and a half hour trip back to check in. He gambled on this long run, but it's paid off with a live well full of quality fish. Hey, the fish bit a lot better than I expected. Woo! I was looking for everything near deep water, little pieces of wood, maybe a sharp drop, anything where fish would be backed off just a little bit. They weren't up in that real shallow water. They wanted to be on some little drop or they wanted to have their nose is right up against a piece of wood and I look for isolated wood not just a bunch of timber so it's worked so far. Well we're still on Bay Springs down here throwing a jerk bait. Uh, feeling like I always need one more big bite huh? That's the way I feel right now. Uh, we got a little sun, we got a little wind. Wind is your friend in clear water. I haven't had much of this the last couple of days so Goodness, this feels like a good one, folks. Oh. Oh. Another big old fat spot, baby. Woo! Man, that feels good. <laughs> In case y'all can't tell, back home, <laughs> I'm feeling good. I like it. Mark Rose adding to his lead. Back to Scott Canterbury, still fishing close to the takeoff spot in Florence. Scott's flipping the current under the Wilson Dam Road Bridge. He needs a big kicker to help move him up the leaderboard. They're gonna try to get out of the current. I mean, they're gonna be behind something in an eddy pocket. It's a timing thing. You pull up here when they're pulled in tight and you can catch them. Good small mouth. Good small mouth right there. It's a good fish right here. Good small mouth. I beg him. It's a big small mile. Big. <laughs> That's the kind you're after right there, guys. It's a giant. It's a giant small mile. That's the kind you need right there. That one will help the cause, sports fans. It's a giant. That's a good example of some of the world-class smallmouth fishing that we've seen out here on Pickwick. A big upgrade for Scott Canterbury. Now over to Jonathan Newton. He also needs a big fish right now in hopes to change the game and challenge Mark Rose. Jonathan moved from fishing those bluffs on the north side of Wilson Lake to a spot that's right up against the dam. Seems like that bluff deal's been dying about 10 or 11 o'clock. You know, that's the reason I made the decision I did to come out here. I'd just like to catch a couple of big ones. There's one. There's one. Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> now then. We ain't giving it away now. To catch a kicker fish, Jonathan switched to a five inch Tennessee Shad Berkeley hollow belly swim bait, rigged with a half ounce Buckeye lure swim bait head tied to 20 pound Berkeley big game monofilament line. Not bad, not as good as I wanted, but not bad. So close to home, Jonathan Newton gets an upgrade. <laughs> While Mark Rose, who's had a great day down in Mississippi. Thank you, Lord. Puts his rod away and has started that 80 mile run back to check in. But there's still plenty of time to fish for the anglers who've decided to stay closer to home. And just a couple of big catches. All right, that'll work. Could throw Rose off course. We're back with more FLW Outdoors action next. Welcome back to the 2009 Strin Series Championship. Opening round leader Mark Rose still on his long ride back, while Jonathan Newton continues to hunt that all-important kicker fish. Meanwhile, let's get you updated on some other anglers in the field. Lloyd Pickett Jr. started the day in fourth place, but he's only caught small keepers today. He's got a five bass limit, but it weighs less than nine pounds. Matthew Jones is in his third year fishing the Strand Series, and here he is making the top 10. He started off in ninth place this morning and has five keepers going a little over 11 pounds. Eric Ambort struggled a little today, but he's had a great 2009 season with top 10s on the Walmart FLW Tour and now here at the Strand Series Championship. Today, he's in a two-man battle to determine the top angler from the Texas division against Robert Robinson, who finished fourth in the 2007 Strin Series Championship. A good result today could punch his ticket for the 2010 Forestwood Cup in Atlanta. Back now to Ott Defoe, who's also looking to secure a trip to Atlanta with one last kicker. Ott's only got a short run back to check in, so he's using every last minute, flipping a jig into heavy cover. The jig I've been using this week, it's just a 5 8 ounce jig. It's a Texas crawl color. So it's got some black and a little bit of brown. Just a couple strands of chartreuse, and I've just got a twin tail grub on the back of it. That grub gives a lot of action. You don't have to move it a lot to get it to do a lot of stuff in the water, and it's not, it doesn't have a lot of resistance either. It's just, just a real good bait for this kind of conditions. The majority of my bigger fish have come on the jig. This week, I did have a few good fish on a crankbait, but most of my better fish have come on a jig. There it is. Stay on there, baby. Yeah, thank you, Lord. All right. That'll work. Thank you, Lord. Man, I was worried that fish was gonna come off. Yes. All right. That's a nice fish, there. That's Closer to three and a half, maybe four pounds. Lots of limits in the field today. The big kicker fish will make all the difference at the weigh-in. Scott Canterbury found some, and so did Jonathan Newton. That last stop, I called, what, three times? So, I was, yeah, I upgraded a good bit. I sure did. That was a good decision. You know, I wish that would have been bigger, but, you know, all in all, that's just the way it is, and, and I don't feel like I left anything unturned, you know. I feel like that uh, I pretty much did all I could do to, to catch them. A great event at the end of the season for the Strand Series Championship here on Pickwick Lake. There's a lot at stake at the weigh-in. We'll crown our champion and determine the top angler from each division that will qualify for the 2010 Forest Wood Cup. The Tennessee River has given up loads of big bass this week, and we saw plenty of them come to the scales the first two days of this event. But out of all of them, only one was big enough to win the title of Folger's Big Bass. 
and here it is. Seven pounds, six ounces. It's a chunk that Mark Rose landed on day one. It helped launch him into the lead and maybe into the winner's circle. Yesterday, the co-anglers finished their competition, and the man who came out on top was Chuck Rounds, a talented co-angler, and he also drives one of our camera boats on the Walmart FLW Tour. I really enjoy it because I don't have to do anything but watch these gentlemen fish and learn. There's so much you can learn by watching. Then you go home in your home lake and you, you try it out. And if it works, well, that's good, but most of the time it does. And that's what I did today. I know these gentlemen fish, most of the gentlemen fish shallow, and that's where we were most of the two days. And I just stuck with the spinnerbait. Well done, Chuck, and congratulations on qualifying for the 2010 Forestwood Cup at Atlanta. He'll be representing the Central Division. The other four heading to Atlanta, Phil Jarman, Steven Semmelsberger Jr., Jeff Grant, and Rich Dalby. Back at the marina for tournament leader Mark Rose, his day went according to plan. Now he'll just have to wait and see how things went for the other pros. You know, I made them have to catch them, and uh, that's all you can ever do is, is uh, make them have to catch them, you know, and so uh, all you can ever ask for is a chance, and we got one. And once the ranger boats come out of the water, the pros start thinking about what still lies ahead, the final weigh-in. We rode along with Jonathan Newton. So, feels good to be over with. It's been a long three days, but a fun three days. The day was really good. I've got five quality fish, but I just don't have any, you know, big ones. I guess my nerves were kind of uh, on edge. I've got a lot on the line. I'm ready to get the way in. I've got to do two things. I've got to beat Scott Kennenberry for a uh, birth in the cup. And I've got to beat Mark Rose for like 115,000, so no pressure. It all started at the beginning of 2009 with anglers from all across the country. In five divisions, the top 40 qualified to be here. And now we're going to wrap it all up as we get ready to crown a new champion and stamp five tickets to the 2010 Forest Wood Cup. Don't go away. It's all coming up next. FLW Outdoors from Florence, Alabama is brought to you by BP, Beyond Petroleum, Yamaha Outboards, Reliability Starts Here, Minn Kota, Anywhere, Anytime, Folgers, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup, Lawrence, and the HDS High Definition System with Structure Scan Add-on Option, and by Chevy the official ride of FLW Outdoors. There's a great crowd on hand at the Florence Walmart for the final weigh-in of the 2009 season. Eric Ambort, representing the Texas division, is first to the scales. He had a tough day and weighs in his lightest limit of the week. It's not enough to keep him in the game or to earn him a slot at the 2010 Forest Wood Cup. A tough day also for Matthew Jones from the Central Division. He finishes with a three-day total, 38 pounds, 14 ounces. With the Texas Division still undecided, Robert Robinson steps to the scales. His three-day total weight of 39 pounds, 4 ounces will take the lead, but only for the moment. More importantly, that makes him the top finisher in the Texas Division, and he qualifies for the 2010 Forest Wood Cup. Now here's Scott Canterbury. And he's got it. Beautiful smallmouth. And he needs nine pounds and seven ounces to take over the lead. He's got five here that weigh a total of 14 pounds even. Your new leader, Scott Canterbury. Scott takes over the top spot, but six anglers have yet to weigh in. Dave Lefebvre can't top Scott's weight today. His dreams of a 2009 victory are over. Ott Defoe steps up with a lot on the line. He had a good day, but was it enough? But he needs a total of 13 pounds and two ounces to take over the lead to Scott Kinneberry. He's got five, the way a total of 16 pounds, one ounce, 47 six, your new leader, Ott Defoe. He holds the lead and takes the Northern Division berth at next year's Forest Wood Cup. 
Lloyd Pickett Jr. is going to have to be happy just making this top 10. He had a tough day. Less than nine pounds. He is eliminated. Keith Pace began the day in third place and brings in over 13 pounds. But even with that, it's not enough to take the lead. Starting in second place this morning, Jonathan Newton. His goal for the day to top tournament leader, Mark Rose. He's got five total weight for National Guard Pro Jonathan Newton. Five fish, 15 pounds, three ounces, 50 pounds, and 10 ounces, your new leader. Jonathan Newton raises the bar up over the 50 pound mark, and that will guarantee him a spot at next year's Forest Wood Cup. Finally, Mark Rose steps up. He took a big risk today, one that could pay off with a wire-to-wire -wire win. He outfished his competition over the first two days of the tournament, but his strategy depended on a big gamble. It's a long way to Mississippi, and one mishap could have spelled disaster. Woo! Bay Springs was the key to his success. He's already won here before. This time, Mark went all in, hoping for one more winning hand. Yeah! Woo! Right now, Mark Rose needs 13 pounds to take over the lead from Jonathan Newton. Jonathan, you probably need to get a little closer view of what's going on here. Right here, where you can watch up close and personal. Yeah, it's pretty nerve wracking. All right, Mark, let's go ahead and load in another one. You want me to go ahead and tell you the outcome? No, I want to be surprised. Now let's find out. He's got four loaded in, and here is number five. Those are football spots. I mean, football spots. That is Northern Alabama, home of the best bass fishing in the country right here. He's got a total of five here. Needs 13 pounds even. Five fish here that weigh 17 pounds, six ounces. Your champion, Mark Rose. What a dominant performance by Mark Rose. He chalks up yet another win here on Pickwick. Mark has already qualified for the 2010 Forestwood Cup through the Walmart FLW Series. So the next highest finisher out of the Central Division, Keith Pace, will take the slot. Jonathan Newton represents the Southeast Division, Ott Defoe the Northern Division, and Robert Robinson the Texas Division. Chad Holbert will represent the Western Division. He finished in 15th. After six Trend Series top tens, Mark Rose finally has a trophy, and this one was worth waiting for. Well, what I think really made the difference for me in this tournament was, one, really having a good feel for what's going on with the fish out there right now, and two, would be uh, making a long run getting away from everybody. It's a big risk, but, and so I went to Bay Springs and figured out that those fish were moving shallow that they wanted fast topwater baits, jerk baits, anything where it was kind of up in the water column. Today I caught a lot of them on a jerk bait. That's what you come to Bay Springs for right there, folks. 12 pound fluorocarbon line, medium action rod, and it was just a jerk, jerk pause. And you're throwing it on these points and things like that. Today that wind, it created a little mud line, and you know that those shad are up there and they're ambushing them right in that mud line. And that's just a place where the fish can hide and come up and attack them and use bright colors. You know, whenever you're dealing with spots, I use real bright chartreuse and uh, it really makes them react pretty good. I was just thinking, man, I got 14, 15 pounds. If I could get a kicker right now. Come on, baby, get in this net. I need you bad. Jonathan would have to catch 19, 20 pounds and I would feel really good. Yeah! Boom! I didn't no more get that thought out of my mind and I caught one about four and a half, five pounds. So, you know, that was just a blessing and, uh, worked out. He gambled big and he won big. Mark Rose goes home with a huge Strin Series championship title and a lot of momentum going into next year's Forest Wood Cup. What a way to end the 2009 season. For more fishing action, call 866-567-1960 to subscribe to FLW Outdoors Magazine and log on to flwoutdoors.com for complete tournament coverage and live webcasts. Join us next time for the National Guard FLW College Fishing Texas Regional from Sibley Lake in Natchitoches, Louisiana. For Charlie Evans, I'm Jason Harper. We'll see you next time here on FLW Outdoors.